I've got a nice little project to show you today, and that is putting up this double kitchen wall cabinet on the wall of my utility room while missing the electrics. I've got a fan in the way that's gonna be scribing down the wall here, and of course, fixing this incredibly heavy wall cabinet to the wall securely, and that's before I've even put anything in it. This corner of our utility room is generally where we have the kettle and the toaster and a coffee machine, but there's no cupboard above. So at the moment, all the mugs and that are being stored underneath, which isn't particularly convenient. So I've been and bought a double kitchen wall cabinet for my favorite DIY shop. And obviously where I want to put it is directly above the toaster and the kettle because it's most convenient here but there's nothing like a challenge is there first of all i have this fan this extractor fan because this is a utility room with the laundry here as well and we don't actually use this fan there's two doors in this room and there's plenty of ventilation so i'm going to have to disable that somehow because that's going to be at the back of the cabinet i've also got a double socket here as well which i know because I've got underfloor heating, that the cables are gonna be going upwards up into the ceiling here somewhere. So I'm gonna to have to find those. The other challenge I have at the moment is that this cabinet, I have no idea what the fixings are. So the other thing I think I need to do is to assemble this carcass and then work out where the fixings are and translate them to the wall. And I might have to do a little bit of messing around because I don't really know at the moment how exactly I'm going to fix it. So let's start with seeing where the electrics are, trying to work out how to disable this, and then putting together this carcass. I use my Bosch detector over the whole area to both track the route of the power cables I know about and also to check for anything else that could be hiding under the surface. The cables I do find, I simply mark out with masking tape. I also find another something near the ceiling, which although I mark out, I think is too high to get in the way. This is an 800 mm wide double cabinet that's also 720 high. It always surprises me how heavy these things are, and that's without the doors and the other panels fitted. So let's watch me put this together for the next minute, together with some modern country music. Why? Why not? So the carcass is just about there, but I've just come across something that I've never ever seen on a flat pack assembly before. And it's the requirement to drill some holes. Not only that, you need a five millimeter brad pointed bit, which not everyone has got, but the hole is drilled from the outside going into the cabinet through the hardboard at the back. So they're suggesting that I should be drilling through these holes 
and then through this hardboard onto the inside of the carcass so then I can mount on the inside these shelf pins that will help support the middle of the shelf that's spanning like this. But if I drill through here and through this hardboard, when it comes out the other side, it's just going to blow out the nice white face of the inside of the hardboard, which is a very strange thing to ask the person assembling this to do. So at the back of the cupboard, we've got two hanging pieces that have got adjustment on them. And if you have a look inside, one adjustment makes them go in and out. Another one makes them go up and down. And the idea is that you bolt this to the wall and it hangs off of it and then you can adjust it up and down. But this piece of alloy that you bolt to the wall is now taking all the load and it's fairly heavy. And I've still got two doors and an end piece still to go on this. So it's quite a heavy piece of kit. What worries me a little bit, the first thing you do is you bend it and you break it apart. So now you've got two pieces, one for either side, which doesn't fill me with huge confidence because if I can break it like that, I'm putting all of this weight on these two pieces of brackets. And I'm sure they've done their calculations and I'm sure they never fall off. It's just that when I look at this, and when I look at the fact that we've got a lip all the way along there, and in my store, I found an offcut of another piece of sort of, well, there's a piece of formica type stuff that I can put maybe underneath there on either side. That means I can support all the way along here without having to worry about these funny little things. So actually, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I cut some melamine to use as hangers, but also decide to use the supplied fixings as well, which may help pin it to the wall front to back, as a bit of a belt and braces really. The hangers I clamp together to a straight edge, which will help me mark out where to drill on the wall. Before I go any further, I realise I need to deal with this fan, so I isolate it from the mains and remove it, which then clearly shows the gap within this dot and dab wall. I mark where my hangers and fixings are going to go and double check for services before drilling some holes just through the plasterboard so I can use my unique dot and dab fixing method. If you haven't seen my way of fixing heavy items to dot and dab walls, please check out my video, link is on the screen and in the description below. In my excitement, I forgot to use the envelope method for catching dust, so I turned to my new Evolution cordless vacuum, which clears things up quickly and means my wife won't get fed up with me using the house vacuum cleaner anymore for DIY. I mix up the filler that's going to fill the gap between the plasterboard and the block work. I'm aiming here for a consistency that's easy to squeeze into the gap, but also won't run away once it's in there. I squidge a good blob of filler into each hole. These holes are near, but not necessarily exactly in the position of the fixing. They don't need to be. And after all of that, I leave them overnight. This is a decorative end panel that I bought because this end of the cabinet is actually on show and this is just plain melamine. This one has got the shiny finish that actually matches the doors that I've chosen. And there's two ways of fitting it. The first way is to actually replace this end panel with this one. It's got the same grooves and the same pin locations for the shelves. But I'm not going to do it that way. The way I'm going to fit it is literally just by screwing it on the end. It's exactly the same size. And what that does is it means that once the doors are on, rather than the cabinet finishing flush with the door, you've got this sort of reveal before you go to the end panel. 
And I've done that for two reasons. Firstly, the rest of my kitchen has been done that way. And secondly, over here, where I'm going to have the filler piece between the cabinet and the wall, I'm going to have the same sort of detail. So at least, although this filler piece is a little bit thicker, at least it's going to look sort of symmetrical. So it's very easy to put this on. All I'm going to do is drill four holes through here and screw it to this end. But the one thing I have to make sure is I don't drill too far. I thought better of drilling any holes into the panel, so although I drill through the carcass, I screw into the decorative panel without using any pilot hole, making sure, of course, that I'm using the correct length screws, because to use screws too long, that would be embarrassing. In the end, I had no choice but to drill the holes at the back from the outside in, as they're needed for shelves and also fixing to the wall. But I use an offcut to stop any blowout of the face. I wonder how many people over the years have just drilled through the back without realising, only to then find that their once nice inside face is now in tatters. I fill a rubble bag with leftover insulation and use it to fill my extractor fan hole. This will provide a good amount of insulation to the room from the outside vent and at the same time ensure no creepy crawlies make a home in that insulation. I mark out the final positions of my fixings for the brackets and I drill all the way through to the blockwork. I'm using 100mm frame fixings here that will grip onto the blockwork 50 to 100mm deep into the wall. I can tighten these up as much as I want without the risk of deflecting the plasterboard. I lift the cabinet into place and it's essentially now sitting on my makeshift brackets, but also hooked onto the supplied brackets so it can't fall forward. To fill the gap between the wall and the cabinet, I need a slight wedge-shaped filler. I cut this from a free piece of cabinet I picked up at my local DIY shop a few weeks ago, that give away timber in exchange for a donation to charity. Before the cut, I put some masking tape on the face to try to cut down any chips and make the cut from the opposite side. This piece then just gets screwed to the side of the cabinet. Two of the holes I drilled from the back are used as fixings onto the wall. So with the cabinet in place, I mark them out ready to drill, although one ended up not where I expected it. Well, I'm not going to be drilling there. After lifting this on and off a number of times, there's definitely a nice feeling when you get to that point, you know the cabinet never has to be taken off the wall again. I then move on to lighter, more fun stuff, like fixing the hinges and putting in the shelves. You'll notice here that off camera I also fitted a trim piece around the bottom of the cabinet which just had one mitre at the corner which I then glued and taped just to ensure a tight fit. Between the filler piece and the wall I run a bead of sealant just to make the joint invisible and use masking tape on either side just to keep things even and clean.
so there you go the cabinet is 100 percent complete and already being used and back in service i must say putting that little bit of sealant down the side has really hidden that gap and although i did it off camera i'm really pleased about this mitre on the corner it's really quite tight and really very pleased with that but there's just one thing left to do that i like to do with all my cabinets and that's to put a little bit of felt on the bottom here that means that when you do close them can't even hear anything anyway i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please check out the other ones on the channel and please go and check out our patreon page where you'll find additional material and additional weekly videos as well so until next time at least i can carry on drinking coffee i'll see you then but i never know which mug to use though